it is really a real pleasure and honor to be in your play. Uh, before I say something about Peter and the thought, uh, thank you very much, Paul, to remind me that next time I go to the United States conference, I will not put tie on. <laughs> Paul Dean came to me and said, you have a problem. I said, no, I don't have a problem because I don't mind to be seen unique. First of all, I came from a different from my unique country. I came from Iraq, Mesopotamia. I look different. I speak different because I have an accent. And I don't mind to be look unique. <laughs> <laughs> when I still can touch. Right. I couldn't agree more with, with, with Max about Peter. He's a, a real kind man. The first time I met Peter was when I came for an interview. I was in Manchester. I did my PhD in anatomy, Sheffield. I love Sheffield. Then I went to Manchester, and for just by uh, chance or coincidence, I saw the advertisement, a job in Sheffield. Oh, I love to go to Sheffield. <laughs> but the job on something here, superior calculus and epilepsy. I am I'm a medical qualified person, and now I teach my student superior calculus something to do with vision reflex. <laughs> How on earth superior calculus involve an epilepsy? And because I left Sheffield, I applied for it. Long time ago, before I terminated that job. So here we go. I got the interview. It's a, a, an MRC grant for three years for um, Peter and for Dean, of course. At that time, Paul was not there for a reason. I don't know. Peter said uh, Paul was not there. This is the meeting with the Red Grace. We did not even uh, sit on a chair or table. He took me to the lab. Very informal. Can you do this? Can you do that? Can you handle that? And uh, he showed me the lab and said, the job's yours. <laughs> <laughs> so, and informal. And you can guess he's a real friend from the first minute. Now, the history, I have many stories, but let me tell you two things uh, with me. One day, Peter came, he, from, from the first week, from the first day, he considered me a friend, little brother, introduced you to his family, lovely wife, Jill, and two children. It's amazing. Uh, uh, late father and mother, one, I, I'm part of the family. Here we go. Uh, Peter came to me, he said, Safa, I got this check. Check on what? He said, this university gave me this check. I don't know about a reward from the university. I don't need this money. This is for you. So I don't need them. He said, no, no, no. We have a, 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 a skiing uh, holiday tomorrow to Paris. You come with us. This is for you. I did like that. He said, Peter. You don't know I'm Iraqi, and I don't have visa. And they will not give me visa because of the war with the, with the, with the Gulf War. So that, 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 a bit disappointment, but that, that's, that's Peter. Soon later, he said, that's it. Next um, holiday to Holy Ho Holy Holyhead. In the angles. And the guy prepared thing, and he, this is a lesson, taught me how to windsurf it. He didn't do, he didn't do anything. He only taught me how to windsurf it. Why? because he was looking for hurricanes. It's for him, hurricane for most For me, a little bit of wind is good for you. <laughs> <laughs> so what is the end? What he said, I thought I really enjoyed it, honest. I loved it. And Peter, at the end of the day of the holiday, he said, Safa, I, I can see you're looking for fishing. I said, why? Because you spend most of the time under the water rather than on the top of the <laughs> surfing. So that's Peter's view on me on surfing. And one more. Something which I couldn't agree more with Matt. My wife, Rima, did her PhD in psychology. After my work, I, went, I got a lectureship in Glasgow. Rima stayed in course to want to finish her uh, PhD. She had a problem with the accommodation. She phoned Peter. Peter took the car with the trailer. He said, you're not living anymore with this accommodation. Come with us in our house. Not only because you can tell Peter would not take any money for the lot. They gave her the best room in the house. And now we call it that Rima's room. This is a quality. You don't see many, many like that. I really thank you for this. And for the rest, you can see what Peter's influence on me during the talk. <coughs> right. So um, now, as you can see the title, how does deep brain stimulation work? I wouldn't claim I'm the best man to do the deep brain stimulation. But from my work and what I left the psychology in Sheffield, I found it interesting to find out how this works. So 
these are my research interests. Before I joined uh, Peter and, and Paul, this is what I used to do. It just uh, the neuroplasticity after nerve injury and the relation with neuropathic pain. I still do it and have very good uh, record of doing this and I have very good uh, paper in general compartment you wrote just now about the mechanism of neuropathy, which is very exciting. But the second one is the deep brain stimulation because this is my work, started with, with uh, Peter and they went to Glasgow and now I'm in the United Arab Emirates and then Peter's always with me. Now, super work. What's the deep brain stimulation? I'm sure uh, must just test on it. Simple. What do you need to do? Under anesthesia, put electrodes in the area of the brain you are interested in. Connect with wire. And here with the, the uh, electricity, uh, like the, what you call, base maker for that. Super. And all what you need, you uh, give the electrical current or pulses, whatever you want it, and then see what happens. That's, that's simple. Now, the, nowadays, this treatment, of course, people did some work on animals, but now they do it in human. And the majority of success is in Parkinson's disease. There are, look at the diseases now that people try to use deep brain stimulation. Tremor, epilepsy, dystonia, psychiatry, Alzheimer's is a huge. Now, what I'm going to talk about my experience with uh, our result, me and Peter, and my group in, in United Arab Emirates, on two uh, areas which is involved in Parkinson and which, was, which is involved in epilepsy. Right. Super word for those who are not aware of the fact that deep brain stimulation is just the advantages is adjustable and adaptable. You have electrical wire there, and you can increase the intensity of current or reduce it. Or you can you can you can adjust it. It's easy. Reversible. If you don't like it, there is a, is a side effect. Take it out. Pull it out. Surgeon, neurophysician, all they say it has no morbidity with minimum lesion. Maybe, maybe not, there is a lesion there, but not as was they did before to lesion the brain to cure the Parkinson. And it's also important that they can do it bilaterally. Because with other areas in the brain, they cannot do bilaterally. So these are the advantages of deep brain stimulation. These are the two guys, you cannot, you cannot talk on deep brain stimulation of the, cell, of the subthalamus of Parkinsonian without mentioning these two giant guys. The Ben Abed, uh, he's the neurosurgeon who um, is being very famous because that's what he does. Deep brain stimulation for Parkinson. And the guy here is a physician and neuroscientist who is behind the idea why he wanted to go for the deep brain stimulation. They got the award recently, 2014, because of the deep brain stimulation to treating Parkinson. Right. Now, the, the next question is where I put it in the, deep, in the brain to cure epilepsy or to cure Parkinsonia. Uh, I, I cannot go on talking about it, let's say very little about the anatomy of the brain. The circuitry which is involved in, uh, in the Parkinsonian, uh, in Parkinson's disease, is that they, there is a connection from the cerebral cortex to the basal ganglia, then thalamus and back to cortex. Even when we teach our students, medical students, they need to remember this connection. Now, this is not enough if you wanted to treat Parkinson. It looks complicated. I'm sure Paul showed some of this. But let me go briefly because we need to, I need to tell you why the people go for this particular area of the brain. So the connection is this. Everything is red here is excitatory. Everything is blue is inhibitory. So the cortex will talk to the striatum. Striatum will send another neuron, which is inhibitory because it's contains GABA, to the globus pallidus. Now, globus pallidus, there are two. This is the external. <coughs> the external globus pallidus will send another neuron to the subthalamic nuclei. And now it's interesting, the subthalamic nuclei is excitatory to the area back to the globus pallidus external. And we have sent another excitatory to globus pallidus internal and the substantia nigra. And of course, this. This is the basic, by the way, I know Paul will have more uh, to talk about the uh, extra connection. Then the output back to the thalamus and thalamus back to the core. <laughs> the interesting in Parkinsonian is this. Substantia nigra have two parts. One compactor, one particular. The compactor contains dopamine, which goes back to the citriator. 
Forget about inhibitory and the, and the excitatory, which we teach our students. But what's interesting here, look, this is the same picture here. People with Parkinsonia, they lost this. They lose the input, which is dopaminergic, from the substantia nigra to the spine. And what happened to the circuitry, this is imbalanced now. What's going to happen here? This is what's going to happen. People found that two nuclei in the basal ganglia, the subthalamic nucleus and the globus pallidus internal, they get abnormal exaggerated activity. That's what they know. Right. Now, Parkinsonian, and I don't know whether I've seen patient or not, once you see one, you won't forget it. If you don't, look at the Muhammad Ali, the ex-boxer, mask face, shuffling, bending, tremor, if you find, if you, if you test the arm, it's rigid, simple. These are the features there. Now, the treatment is, I mean, I would call it easy because all what you need to replace dopamine, for a short of time, it will stop working and the patient will have problem with the, with the dyskinesia, problem movement. So what the, what the surgeon do? The beginning when I was a student, they, they, because of the circuitry, is imbalance here, they lead the thalamus. And they say, when you reach the thalamus, the patient gets better. With these two giant guys, there's two areas here, the globus pallidus internal and subthalamus. So they came back here, as Max said, where they go, they go to the globus pallidus internal and they lesion it, and the patient get better. Now, the history is this. I hope I got to try it. Before, Max will tell me, because before you lesion it, you need to test it. You need to test the area. And somehow, when they tested the globus pallidus internal, or subthalamus, you give the current, and the patient now get better. So this is the idea. Why do I want to lesion the area? If I can stop the, C, can stop the trauma, with the electrical current. And the basic idea of this, maybe is good for neuroscientists. Ben Abed thought about something. The good idea is, he said, I will give high frequency stimulation. That's it. That's it. He, ha he has the tribune. I want to go for high frequency. You give high frequency, the step, patient stop turmeric. You give low frequency, it might get worse. So this is the basic idea about the guy who got, a, got, a, got a prize with the Parkinsonian, he decided to go with the high frequency. It, it seems that high frequency stimulation will stop the shaking. Now, before they did the uh, lesion, they, sorry, the, the brain stimulation, they know lesion, the external, the internal, or the subthalamus both will get rid of the Parkinsonian disease. So, what's the conclusion by Ben Abel? Lesion of the subthalamus or deep it's deep brain stimulation with high frequency give the same. So he concluded that's most likely hypothesis. How the deep brain stimulation work is by the inhibition of the area, which is the subthalamus, which sounds very, very logical. Now, look what he said after all his work. That's his, his review. The guy, the giant guy who did experiment on animal, on human, that's what he said in recent review, the guy who got the, the prize. What is this? Debatable. What does that mean? Look, this is his, 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 hypo, uh, his, his view on deep brain simulation in 2005. See, look, this is, the, this is the subthalamus where he put the electrode in. What could happen? There are too many structures around it. So if you put current, it might, because of the lesion, it might inhibit the area it's interested in. But also, it might excite the neuron which comes to the nucleus. The green is inhibitory. Red is excited. So that means you might, inhib you might bring inhibition to the same area you used to be. Or you might stimulate the fiber which down to the target. You ex excited. You might excite the nerve fiber which come with nothing to do with the nuclei. That's why people feel maybe tingling in their hand or moving of the eye. So this is, the, this is the, his view. And apparently, he said, with deep brain stimulation, that's what's going like to happen. Well, inhibition of this area, the stimulation of the inhibitory come to the same area. You might stimulate the target by exciting the axon, and you might also excite the fibers next to the stimulator. That's what he thinks. And he took 2011, and he said it's under debate. Interesting. Now, where's my interest in this? This is here. I joined 
Paul and Peter on, as I said, project on the epilepsy. And this is the paper which um, Peter and, and, and Paul would like to work on. It. What they said, there's a 19 uh, 82. This is a science paper to show if you inhibit substantia nigra, you will stop epileptic seizure. It's, it's very interesting. Now, how, how do they do it? They use animal models, of course. And this animal model, we call it maximum electrocochial model. You give the current to the ears, the animals suddenly lose consciousness, and they go with the tonic seizure. It's here. This is an animal photograph in your lab, Peter and since 1990 or so, okay? This is an animal, have shock through the ear clip, and then all of a sudden they lose consciousness, and look, they go with called tonic hind limb extension. See, they, they, it goes for about five to 10 seconds. This is an animal in our lab when we inhibit nigra, that's what happened, there is no extension. So in that case, this is an animal which we protect from being, for having tonic seizure. Any drug, now, any drug will abolish this extension because of this treatment of the electric short being considered as anti-epileptic or anti-compulsive. So we use this technique. So that's, that's what Karen Hill experiment in size. They, they put GABA agonist, which is GABA hair muscular. They put it in Nigra, and they, they, they um, concluded that Nigra is anti-compulsive. Everybody excited all over the world. Everybody has his own model of epilepsy, and it is amazing. It is unanimously agreed in, in major labs over the world to show that the inhibition of substantia nigra is anticonvulsant. And led by the polos to this nice review in 1994, this is it. Inhibition nigra, you stop seeing. Now, here we go. I came, this is a sagittal section of the brain. Look, inhibition of nigra, uh, um, Peter and, uh, and, and Paul got this grant to see the role, the major target for inhibition region is the superior calculus. That's what I got, as I repeat again, I got excited here. Superior calculus, something for the vision. Paul just mentioned about avoidance and the orientation. <coughs> How this area will inhibit tonic seizure. Now, I came to the lab and Work there. We did a huge work by induce, uh, by injection by cocaine, which is GABA antagonist, to stimulate the area, and we managed to characterize the area of the deep of the deep layer. I mean, now uh, what Peter and Paul call dorsal midbrain anticonvulsive zone. This is the word called DMAS. <laughs> DMAS DMAS is the dorsal. Yes. We have the, uh, three papers uh, uh, to do the characterization. So, and we also characterize which area in the substation are the most likely to have a seizure. So we, we probably, uh, together, we have four papers on the nigra to the superior calculus. Here I left uh, Paul and, and uh, Peter, and then I got lectures to in Glasgow. But I didn't stop doing the follow-up, because anatomically we know it's very likely what is the pathway, which Paul talked about, which is the pathway of the superior calculus going to the spinal cord to prevent the tonic seizure. So I was in Glasgow here, and uh, we characterized the area. The next station we saw to top seizure is the ventrolateral pontine reticular formation. Is again, Peter and I published that in the European and German Neuroscience. Now here, Peter and I applied for a grant to the MRC about the completing the circuitry. And I, 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 if I remember, we didn't get the grant, MRC. And I think the reason for two of these things at that time, it's nine, early 90s, if you don't do molecular biology, if you don't do in situ hybridization, your research is rubbish. I, I can see it in the reviewer. And the second one, and the second one, which is also interesting, one of the reviewer, I can, you can detect is a, a neurophysician, and you cannot link how on earth you inject something in the, in the human. This is not be applicable. There is no application where you inject something in the brain temporarily and substitution. That guy, or even us, didn't know that sooner or later, people will come with deep brain stimulation, put a wire, and it stimulated the area to stop the, the disease. And that's what happened next to do the, uh, the deep brain stimulation. We didn't stop this. Peter and I characterized the area here, and we finished the circuitry. So what we have here, Niagara to the deep layer of the superior calculus, 
which also included the uh, underlying vertical formation to the bones, medulla, and then to the to the spinal cord. So we finished the circuitry. So what we do? The guy is not wrong. We cannot put a drug or, or a tube to block seizure in human. And then the deep brain stimulation come. What did, what I did next? The area which is very according to Peter Redgrave expression. The sexy area to go for is the subthalamic sub nucleus. That's what they say. It's a, it's a sexy nucleus here. So, because in that, those, these, these days, uh, people found that um, uh, there are, in rat, they found that this subthalamic nucleus, it will inhibit or be anticonvulsant from a seizure which, which starts in the fourth brain. Because epilepsy is not a, it's not a disease, it's a collection of syndrome. It could be anywhere in the brain. And in human, they have some encouraging work about the role of the subthalamus in preventing epileptic seizure. So, okay, let's do it on, let's do it on right. Okay, the aim of the study, which we carried out, is just to see whether the subthalamic nucleus manipulation will stop the seizure which comes from the brainstem, which is the tonic seizure. So, we have three experiments. Pharmacological experiment, the brain stimulation, and lesion. Let's go for the first one. What do we do? Again. This is the section of the brain. What did we need to inhibit subthalamus? How did we do it? We inserted cunningly under deep, under deep, under deep, deep, deep anesthesia. Then cemented cunningly with the, with the cement to the skull. And three to five days later, we put the needle through the cunningly and we inject the GABA agonist, which is inhibitory to the subthalamus. All this technique are learned in Peter and, and, and Paul Labs with the help of Marian, she just left, and the histology done by Natalie. Right, so, what is the result? Inhibition of the subthalamus did not stop the tonic seizure in our hand. There is no, there is no significant reduction in the tonic seizure. Anybody in the literature say, oh, and sitting in the lab or here, said, you might have done something wrong. The reason why inhibition of the subthalamus did not work in seizure, not because we have problem with the, with the technique. We proved it. Why? We cut the, we cut the section of the uh, brain of the animal, and we can see the, the site of the tip of the, of the injection is exactly in the septum nucleus. This is one. We used the same dose as before. We used the same dose as we used before with other people. And maybe perhaps we say, with putting some injection there, it might not diffuse well enough to inhibit the area. Like what we've done. We have very nice technique in our lab. And this technique, and in this technique, we use CFOS. CFOS is a, an early immediate gene. And normally, you don't see it in the brain. But the basal level is very, very, very little, if any. But when you activate the neuron, the protein will go up, and we can, we can, we can detect the activated neuron by, by immunocytochemistry. So these are the areas which are always interested in our work. We have the globus pallidus. Endopodentular nucleus is the same as the globus pallidus internal in humans, the subthalamus and the neck. Normally you see nothing. What's interesting, if we put the animal under an ether for two, 20 minutes, look at the activity. A huge activation of the CFOS in all three areas. So what we thought, we used this technique to show what happened if we must go here. This is the result. So this is an animal, uh, this is the, the Animal which has seizure, look, in subthalamus. If you haven't seen subthalamus before, you can draw a club shape like structure with high activity of C4. This is normal, and this is the injection side with, with muscular. This is the, the, this is the tip of the needle, and you can see all the C4 disappear. You might say, what about this small dot? This small dot, we proved it, these are the nuclei in response to the injection of the needle. So this, 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 uh, this, uh, this um, figure showed you that. We inhibit the subthalamus. We, we, we had no problem with the inhibited nucleus, but it's not working. This is the pharmacological test. So let's go for the uh, deep brain stimulation. Again, we did under general anesthesia, uh, 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 um, insert electrode, the tip of the electrode sitting on the subthalamic nucleus, put the cement around it. Five days later, this is the, what they look like. I would look like. They're happy. Don't worry about it. This, it might look horrible, but they are not. They don't mind. I'm telling you, they don't mind. That's what they look after. They, that's what they look after the surgeon. I know, right? So, and again, when we give the deep brain stimulation, 
with the frequency the other people use for animals and for patients. It did not block the tonic We left with one more experiment, Legion de Septanus. And this is an experiment to show in this animal, this is the um, standing with the new animal, the, uh, an antibody which gives you the picture of the neurons of the, of the brain. And very clear, this is the subthalamus, and this is the area which is legion. In this animal, again, there is no inhibition of toxicity. This is the conclusion. Inhibition, high frequency stimulation, and legion of subthalamus did not produce significant reduction in the toxicity. In the conclusion, and this is we, uh, again, Peter was with us on this paper, and as I said, it might be that Subthalamus is not critical to suppress the tonic seizure, and we suggest that might not be, it can be a good uh, choice for treating patients with tonic seizure. So this experiment finished. What's next? I think what's next, I thought we let's go back to the mother of and of, of, of anticompulsive. This is substantial anger. So let's go back to substantial anger. See, we, we, shall we go? Because uh, uh, in our hand, for many people, it is anticonvulsants in many other models of epilepsy. And that's what we did. Again, put the wire, electrode, and Niagara. See what happened. This is the surgery. Now we put the wire in the, in the, in the, in the, in the Niagara. And we use the same technique. Look, this is a, an animal which had uh, ether and the, the tip of the electrode and Niagara. These are the three uh, serial sections, not serial section, three sections from the roster of Niagara. Middle of Niagara and, and Cotton Niagara. Look, this is the, the, the contralateral side. Look what the ether does. Huge activity in the contralateral side. You put the inner, completely disappear. Look, huge, significantly appear from all rostocotal level of the substantial. This is the area where the stem of the x So with this, with this experiment, we know if we apply the uh, High frequency stimulation, we inhibit the activity in the substantial anger. And we did uh, at least four uh, frequencies. 130 is the one we use for human. So we use one less and at least two, three more. And look at the graph here. These are the C4 number of neurons in rostral, middle, and caudal anger. And uh, the frequency be below 80 is not working, no significant effect. Like what Ben Abed suggested, you go for high frequency to inhibit the neuron. And what we have here, 130, 260, 300. When you increase the, the frequency, remarkable and very significant suppression of the neurons in the substantial anger. Now, the question, does this uh, manipulation will inhibit seizure? The answer is no. The answer is no. I know he, he, the, the next question, if we allow it in the next case, so why? We discussed that thoroughly in the, in the paper, and I'm very pleased to get this published in the Neurobiology of Disease in 2011. It's a good paper. Right. We are happy to see that. Now, my story has not finished. Not finished. Let's go back to our, to our issue. What, what happened? Now, the, um, I wanted to go back to the height, to the subthalamus again, because nowadays, subthalamus is treating for Parkinsonian. I wanted to see whether that would, would, would do the same effect in the subthalamus. Okay, so now the electrode again targeted the subthalamus nucleus. Now, uh, I don't mind repeating this picture. You see, normally, uh, uh, a rat without ether, there is no basal level of the C4. Look at these dots here. Huge activation of the activity in subthalamus, nigra, into potential nucleus, and the globus pallet. Now, this is an animal where you put the electrode in the middle of the subthalamus. This is the rostral, uh, this is the rostral subthalamus nucleus, middle and caudal. Look at the contralateral side, the huge activity on the left side is completely abolished. So we, we, we know from this experiment, we managed to get the neural activity down, and this is inhibitory effect. Now I call my uncle, I call my uncle, Peter Andre. I said, Peter, we did this experiment. But there's something interesting. Because they, um, clinically, when they destroy subthalamus, that means they remove the subthalamus. That means the target will also effect will be removed, which you expect inhibitory in the target. And I was talking with Peter, I said, what happened in the target, there is excitation. 
And Peter said, this is the thing you need to report, not this. So that's what we done. Now, this is the side detection of the subthalamus, which has, we know from the past, the subthalamus has excitatory output to the three neurons, globus pallidus, and topodendral nucleus, which is the globus pallidus internal of the human, and the substantia nine. So let, let's have a look what we, what happened. Now, the prediction is here. If we put deep brain stimulation, deep brain stimulation subtitles, if it's inhibitory, we see less neuron level with C force in the target, subsession aircraft on top of the glass and the globus part. If it's excitatory, one expect to see more. And if it is excitatory and inhibitory, it just depends what's the, what's the statistics here. This is the result here. Now, the first experiment here to characterize the action of ether on the um, activity in this area. This is again the uh, injection of muscimol, which is GABA agonist inhibitory, in the subthalamus exposed to ether. Look, this is the uh, effect of ether. Huge activity in subthalamus, nigra, and tabodenglas, and the lower. Look, completely suppressed here, not only at A, but also on the target. So we know from this experiment, ether is excitatory. Why? Because inhibition by GABA it will abolish it. The second feature of this, we know that this, at least the activation of the target, must have come from the uh, mother nucleus, which is the target nucleus. And the, the, the counting of the neurons very clearly uh, low on the injection side or the inhibitor side. Now, what happened? We did the experiment with the deep brain stimulation, with high frequency stimulation. It's the reverse. This is the effect of the ether, but now this is the area where we uh, have a deep brain stimulation with high frequency. Not only the number of neurons labeled with CFOS are increased, but I've noticed even the, it's darker, it's brighter on the, uh, 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 the stimulated side, which means that the black is the uh, side with ether, the gray is with ether and deep brain stimulation. So, it's a conclusion. It's a conclusion from the experiment. The deep brain stimulation, although it might inhibit the area, it excites the target with this experiment. So it looks like the higher activity or more activity in the target might come from the subthalamus. So we finally explained that this is what we did. This is a normal rod, it's supposed to nothing. What we did here, we excite the subthalamus with caning, which is excitatory, and we see the activity increase in the target. I deliberately had the low power because if you are an atomist, you would love to see the activity in the uh, low power uh, images. So, canic excitation of the subthalamus, you get high activity of C force in the tablet. Low spallidus, and dopodentalon, and the knife. Exactly the same if we only use deep brain stimulation. Look, deep brain stimulation will turn the tablet. Global spallidus, uh, and dopodentalon, and knife. So this experiment showed that whether you, you stimulate chemically the subthalamus or deep brain stimulation, you get the same effect at the target. Now, what's the conclusion of all this? Our conclusion is this. The stimulation of the subthalamus, which is well known now as a treatment of Parkinson's disease, it, it is not uh, inhibiting the target. As a matter of fact, it's activating the target. The next question is this. If this is exactly happening, how can you explain lesion of the cell of the subthalamus to treat the Parkinson? Is this really the effect through which the therapeutic of deep brain happened? From all our knowledge, from all our knowledge and knowledge and other people, it doesn't need to see so. We like it to say our group and Peter got it to publish in neuroscience. 2014. Now, which is this paper here. Now, let's go back to our big guy, Ben Abed. That's what he said. What is the effect here? Is it the inhibition of the subthalamus? Is it excited ED? Or is this the uh, um, effect of the other area? Our results show suited. Inhibition of this and excitation of that. But what's interesting is a paper by, by this group led by Carl 
Stanford. It is another science paper. And they come with some completely different story how the deep brain stimulation treat Parkinson. And they said this is the antidromic effect on these neurons down to the cortex. They use the optogenetic technique. This is a unique technique. Not so many people know exactly how it works. But they published the work and said the, they did many experiments, science paper, we have to believe in it. But they now <laughs> we have to believe it. We have to believe this is from this group. But it's interesting is this. This paper published in 2009. And everybody is excited about this in science. Now the big man who does all his life's deep brain simulation and he got a, a prize, ignored this publication in his review 2011. You wonder why. <laughs> I ask you, you know the why. As a conclusion from our work, me and Peter, is that locally it inhibits the neurons, but we have excitatory to the target. Now, this what I presented to you is more than 20 years work, and I'm sure there are a huge number of people to be acknowledged here. This is the uh, people here in, in psychology. Peter, this is you and me. At that time, both Paul Dean and Max have gray hair. But look at us here. I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> see, black hair. That's good. All right, you see? And this is the group which we, I mean, to tell the truth, uh, Sheila and I and Susie were sitting on the table. We're not standing, by the way. Uh, Natalie, uh, thank you very much. She helped me with the histology. And Marion helped me with the um, behavior uh, work. Now, what I'll say here. Sheila King, she did her PhD with you and, and Pauline. Whenever she wanted to talk with me about her research, she said, when she referred to Peter, she said, is your hero. And she got it absolutely right. Peter, you're my hero. And heroes are, high, are fine to find nowadays. Now, last thing. This is what? <laughs> this is Peter's house. <coughs> this is in March house. This is Peter's house here. It's nice in summer, of course. And look, it is a, it is a, it's a hilly uh, road here. And this is in summer, but that's what you get the picture in, 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 in winter. Sorry, uh, sorry, guys, you didn't come to the dinner last night, but you've seen the same picture now. What, why do I want to see this? Or you want to see this? I think me and Peter were planning to put electrode here to do, to do <laughs> deep brain stimulation on the roof of Peter's house, maybe perhaps to prevent the accumulation or inhibit the accumulation of the snow. <laughs> no, this is not true. I wanted to show this, uh, this picture because on these days, all people here, they don't leave their cars here. They put at the top of the, of the, of the road. And this is here where I had my first lesson of skiing. <laughs> by Peter at the grave. And then he took me to Derbyshire. Thank you very much. And Peter, let me tell you one thing. He took me to Derbyshire. Skiing downhill, it took one, one minute, but three hours to climb all the hill. <laughs> <laughs> Peter, is it, is the, uh, I'm, I'm delighted to be here. And the, I said the, to acknowledge there are a huge number of people, but please, please, please allow me to say Thank you, Peter, for being a fantastic mentor and real friend. And this is his work. Wish you a happy day. Mm -hmm.